In this problem, we're told to find the maximum acceleration a car can undergo if the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the ground is 0.9. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram of what's going on here. So that's how you always want to start these. So this is going to be our car. And so we know a car is going to be on the ground. And so what forces do we know are acting on this car? So we know anything that has mass is going to have the force of m times g, right? So the weight force acting down. Right? And then we also know since it's touching the ground, it's going to have a normal force, which we call F sub n. And so we know one additional force, right? So we know the force of static friction. I like to label it in this direction, right? Because if you think about it, right, our car is going to be, it's going to be harder for it to move because of this friction force. So we're going to need a greater force in this direction to overcome it, right? Because we have some force acting in this direction. So I'm going to draw a force in this direction. It's going to, I'm going to call it F sub F. So the force of friction. And so what we're going to do here is now that we have it written down, what we're going to want to do is use this formula in order to solve. So F, uh, F sub F, right? So the force of friction is going to be equal to mu sub S, which is your coefficient of static friction, which they give us, which is 0.9, times your normal force. So this is the equation we're going to want to use to solve this. But keep in mind they're asking for the acceleration. And so you'll see how it works out. But essentially what we're going to do is plug in different variables for this, and one of them is going to have a. And so what we're going to do is actually be able to solve for a. So let's go ahead and start off by finding what f sub n is. So when you want to find these variables and replace them, essentially what you're doing is trying to find the sum of the forces in that direction and then just uh, replace it with what it is, right? So we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be equal to ma. But keep in mind in the y direction, acceleration is 0, so it's really just m times 0, which is 0. And then we just set it equal to uh, the sum of the forces, right? So what are the different forces? So we have F sub n, right? It's going up, so we keep it positive. And then we minus mg, because mg is going down, so we say minus. And then if I add mg to both sides, Fn, or the normal force, equals m times g. So what we can do is replace F sub n with mg, and it's going to help us solve. And so we can replace this in a second, but let's find out what F sub F is. So same thing, but in the X direction. So the sum of the forces in the X direction is going to be equal to MA. But notice the only force we have in the X direction is this friction force, right? So F sub F is equal to MA. And so notice now, if we plug this in here, uh, what we're going to be able to do is solve for A. So if I plug in these in for each of these, we're going to get MA equals mu sub S, which is the coefficient of static friction, which we know what it is, it's 0.9. So 0.9 times mg, right, our normal force. And so now what you should notice is that we can solve for a. But we don't know the mass, but what you should see is that m and m can cancel because they, we have one on each side. So our acceleration is just going to be 0.9 times g, which is the force of gravity. And so gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So, or just 9.8, right? So 0.9 times 9.8 is going to give us our acceleration. If you go ahead and do this, you'll get 8.8. .8 and then it's going to be in meters per second squared, right? So acceleration is going to be equal to 8.8 .8 meters per second squared. So that's going to be the maximum acceleration uh, this car can undergo. And so hopefully you found this video useful.